This is my Canon 450D. It's a good camera for taking pictures, but unfortunately, it cannot film. And here are some videos that I filmed with it. It was a simple software issue actually. After a bit of search and a quick app download, the camera was good to go. And this was filmed in 2023 with a modern lens that I bought back in I think 2022 or something. But still, the footage, you know, it has that old charm. It's not so sterile as what modern cameras aim to be. And this got me thinking, if a modern lens on an old sensor looks like this, then how would an old lens on a modern sensor look like? What is even more exciting, this wouldn't even be a software issue, but rather a hardware design issue. And CAD design, that's what I do. Starting to do something without knowing anything about it is pretty hard, but that needs to constantly happen in order for you to grow. I'll teach you how. First, you do your research. Watch YouTube videos, read old forum posts, jump in and out from Wikipedia. That's where I learned about the term flange distance. Basically, each lens projects and focuses an image onto a sensor, right? And it does so only at the, the specific distance. That's what a flange distance is, that length. And of course, different lenses, you know, different flange distances, that complicates things quite a bit in terms of design. Second, you gather what you need. Looking at my Canon cameras, I have noticed that their sensor is deep, so their flange distance is long. This would mean that getting any lens type that's higher in this list it's by the way sorted from shortest to longest flange distance, it would require the lens to go, actually go into the body of the camera. And that won't do. I guess an excuse to get a new camera. No mirror. That gets in the way. Sony E-mount would do, but they are so damn expensive. I got this used one for $200. The sensor used in this camera has been used in other Sony models until 2022, so it's still modern enough for me. Finding vintage lenses is easy. Finding vintage lenses from 1940s or 50s that were made for black and white photography and also were cheap and also would still work, well that's hard. I managed to get three of them by bidding on an old camera set in a local auction house. This is a Robot Recorder 24 from 1950s. This is Robot Wall Automat. I'm sorry, Wallomat Star 2 from 1960s. And this is an 8mm video camcorder from 1930s. And these are their lenses. The 75mm Xenar lens, the 38mm Xenar lens, and this 12.5mm Anat... Anat? Anat? I'm not sure. Thankfully, all of them are in pretty good shape, pretty good condition. After doing a bit more testing and research, I figured out their flange distances. Those Xenar lenses will not be a problem. But a small 8mm lens, video lens, well that's a D-mount right there. This means that even if I were to rest it on these sensor protectors, it would still be too far for the sensor to actually focus. Best case scenario, it could be used as a macro lens. Mm. I'll figure something out. Just like I figured out how to do a segue to our sponsor Skillshare. Young designers are constantly pushing boundaries and Skillshare offers the perfect platform to help them thrive. From mastering 3D modeling and creative visualization 
to exploring graphic design, Skillshare provides the tools to enhance any creative practice. Courses like AI in Design show how to integrate cutting-edge technology into design workflows, allowing designers to innovate and stay ahead in a rapidly evolving industry. For example, through this AI for content creation course, I found ways on how to optimize the boring tasks of my YouTube channel. Skillshare empowers creative minds to grow, stay inspired, and take control of their creative futures. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today! Third, you begin trying and you never stop. Well, I guess in this case you begin designing. Designing an adapter. The 38mm camera, that, uh, or ca camera lens, that was easy. It's just a screw mount, so modeling that just required a few measurements. And then a few tests to get the flange distance dialed in. It ended up being half a millimeter shorter than expected. The 75 millimeter one, well, that was more tricky. The way it grabs and changes focus after grabbing makes it hard to design a mount for it. Took me five days, but here it is. And then, then we have the little guy. First step was to file down its sides so that we can push him deeper into the body of the camera. Then designing something that's basically a cap with a hole for it to stick out from. Sounds easy, but since a single mistake could cost me a sensor, the whole testing process was, uh, you know, a little bit spicy. But in the end, with general CAD skills and three weeks invested, I finally had three adapters that you couldn't buy for lenses that were made by people who couldn't even imagine on what kind of camera they will be mounted. Honestly, I was quite surprised by how well the lenses adapted. The 38mm Xenar lens, it focuses to infinity and has no vignetting whatsoever. The image is quite sharp, but has a certain softness to it, especially in areas where it's starting to defocus. The clips shown here have minimal correction done, a bit of highlight boost and a bit of white balance correction since I was filming with a lower exposure preset and the auto white balance setting. The 75mm Xenar lens, or Telexenar lens, which is by the way equivalent to 112.5mm on an APS-C sensor rather than full frame, in this camera I'm using APS-C sensor, it only focuses to infinity if I drop it down to, or drop its aperture down to f5.6 uh, I believe. And I'm not sure what's up with that. It's still a lens with a really lovely character though. Same softness about it, the only issue is that there's no image stabilization, so you really need to hold still when using a telescopic lens such as this. Again, minimal adjustments were made to the footage, same as for the 38mm lens. And now, the star of the show, the little guy. It's made for a 8x8mm film, I think it's called Super 8 film, 
It only uses a small portion of the sensor. But damn, <laughs> that's some character right there. I haven't made any adjustments to the footage you see here, just to be, you know, pretty straightforward. Seems like the square format would be great for Instagram or something. I trust that all of you watching have a thing that you like to make, but it's tucked away because you don't even know where to begin. Well, the answer is you begin at the beginning. All files available for Patreon supporters, link in the video description below. If you like this type of videos, please leave a comment and let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.